The American Secretary of Defense, Dick Cheney, live there at the Pentagon in Washington. Let me remind you briefly of what he said. He warned us all that up till now, uh, the Pentagon had been forthcoming about telling us what had been going on in the air campaign, both in Washington and with their official briefing officers in Riyadh. That would now end, he said. We must assume that the enemy is confused about what is happening. And obviously, he said, we don't want to say anything in our briefings that would give the Iraqis any information. However, he did say that we do not want to underestimate Iraqi forces. He also said that it is not an objective of US policy to change the government of Iraq. If it happens, though, he said, so be it. Now, one point that he did make very early on was that a planning date and hour for the land campaign to start had been decided on in consultation with General Schwarzkopf some time ago. I'm going to take that point up now with our correspondent in Washington, Bill Neely. Bill, it's the first we've heard that the date had been uh, arranged quite a long time ago, which, in fact, the British commander in the field, uh, Lef uh, General Sir Peter de la Billiere, had said some time ago. Yes, he did. And in fact, uh, this operation has now taken place in one of the windows of opportunity that there had been a great deal of speculation about. And we'd heard indeed with that, within the last 36 hours that the weather was good uh, for a military operation of this kind. And interestingly, during that briefing, uh, Dick Cheney uh, hinted at what he'd said, uh, I think, three weeks ago for the first time, that there comes a point when uh, there is a law of diminishing returns, when air power ceases to have the effectiveness that it should have, really. There, is only, there are only so many targets that you can actually pick out. There is only so, much, uh, so many sorties that you can fly uh, to try to clear the path for ground troops. And then you begin to reach the point of diminishing returns where you've got planes coming back, perhaps coming back with missiles, or planes that are going over targets and not finding anything new to hit. And I think a coincidence, uh, uh, the, the bringing together of those two things. Uh, he also mentioned the, uh, it, the, the, the plan was subject to change, a change in the weather or a change in the diplomatic climate. I, I think what I said earlier still holds that the president uh, pr probably, although we've no proof of this, probably uh, informed his commander, General Schwarzkopf in Saudi Arabia, that if the Iraqis did not comply by midday Eastern Standard Time, uh, Washington time, at five o'clock in the evening, your time, then the, the plans that have already been arranged, the military packages that have been discussed and planned since uh, the middle of August, that they should go ahead. Bill, in Washington, thanks very much indeed. I'm going to bring in my guest in the studio with me here in London, Paddy Ashdown, leader of the Liberal Democrats. Mr. Ashdown. Good morning, John. What do you make of this? Well, it's happened. It's happened, I think, when most of us thought it would. It's happened in the military window, and that window was chosen. I agree very much with Bill. There will have been a number of dates, times chosen, largely, I suspect, determined by the weather and the tides. What we will now see is a battle which will be fought and which will have to be fought in our terms, not his. And the whole of the name of the game will be to fight a maneuver battle, a fast battle. I'm fascinated by the fact that they have clearly gone in at dawn. I think that says quite a deal about the confidence that they have in the initial breaking through phase of this. If they had had less confidence, they would have gone in at night. But it's clear that having gone in at dawn, they want to make very fast progress uh, in the daylight hours and continue through in the night. I think what we'll see is a build-up of momentum to be carried forward into a fast war. Saddam Hussein will want to bog us down into a war of fixed positions, a war of attrition, and that we must not allow us, uh, ourselves to fight. We want to use the deserts and we want to stay away from the built-up areas and uh, do what we can to cut off his forces. You're, you're speaking there as a military man, a former military man rather than a politician. And indeed, it, it, it does seem to be coming through from the statements that we're hearing that the war has now moved from the politicians. It is now in the military commander's hands. Do you believe that General Schwarzkopf now has a totally free hand to conduct this campaign as, as he wishes? Yes, within the terms set by the UN resolutions, and that's how it should be. Uh, we failed. The politicians have failed to keep the peace. We now have to hand it over to the soldiers, and we have to have the ability and trust in their skill and to providence to produce a quick victory with the minimum casualties. It really is not up to politicians at this stage to interfere from several thousand miles away in the conduct of the war, provided it stays within the ambits, within the constraints that have been set by the UN resolutions. We obviously don't want to discuss 
tactics in too great a detail for the very same reason that exactly Dick so. Cheney has said, that uh, we don't want to give any information away. However, you as a former soldier, do you see this as being a lightning campaign? Will it be quickly over or should we expect now several weeks of warfare? Well, John, you can't tell and I don't want to speculate, frankly, um, but I will only say this, that it must be our aim to fight a fast war. Um, there's an old military saying, the first casualty in war is the plan. What I'm clear is that this has been a very carefully laid out plan. If it is a war of manoeuvre, and I'm sure it must be, we'll want to use all our superiority, that is air superiority, sea superiority and manoeuvrability on land. And the key to it all will have been logistics. And that's why I suspect we spent so long building those up. Beyond that, uh, we must be going for a fast war. Uh, how long that will be, what mistakes there will be, as there always are, huge operation. Um, I don't know. What I will say is this, that we in Britain, the best thing we can do to support our services now is to show the same courage and determination to drive this through, perhaps even in the face of bad news when it comes, to give them the chance to be able to do what has to be done. Paddy Ashton, thank you very much indeed. Let's return to Washington and our correspondent, Bill Neely. Bill, uh, I suppose it is a fact, as Paddy Ashton said, it will be a war of manoeuvre. The Allies can manoeuvre, but in fact the Iraqis are bunkered down. So in a sense they're static and that will be a feature presumably of this war. That's right, and th that would be a feature of the planning as well. The Iraqi fortifications are reasonably well known, well known to the Pentagon, both through uh, satellite information, satellite photography, and the reconnaissance exercises that have been carrying out deeper and deeper into uh, occupied Kuwait over the past uh, few days. And one thing I'd just like to pick up that Paddy Ashton mentioned, uh, and I think uh, it's recognized here, President Bush, I think, has handed control of this operation now over to Norman Schwarzkopf. This is not a president who, he said many, many times, this will not be another Vietnam and he, he means that in many ways. He means it politically that the troops will not have their hands tied behind their back by politicians. But more interestingly, he also means it, that uh, it will not be like President Johnson, who boasted that there was not a target in Vietnam that uh, was hit without him knowing about it, that he, he chose the targets uh, from the Oval Office and directed the bombers and directed the fire to Vietnam. This is a president who has complete confidence in General Schwarzkopf, who has now handed over responsibility for the military campaign to him. And it's up to General Schwarzkopf now to carry out the very carefully planned campaign that uh, has been uh, talked about and planned between Dick Cheney, General Schwarzkopf, Colin Powell and the president for months now. Bill Neely in Washington, thanks very much indeed. As we reported earlier, we have had some official reaction from the Iraqi ambassador at the United, Nation, uh, the United Nations. We have this report on both Iraqi and Kuwaiti reaction at the UN in New York. We have just gotten our first reaction from the Iraqi deputy ambassador to the UN to the start of the ground war. The ambassador uh, was just leaving the UN to go to his mission to learn about more details, uh, apparently to watch television probably, to get more details about the beginning of the land battle. On his way to his car, the Iraqi ambassador said Iraq will never surrender. A reporter raised the possibility that thousands or even tens of thousands of Iraqis might die if there's no surrender. And he said, but a lot of Americans will die also. And as he got into his car, here was what he had to say. What you've heard, though, how do you feel about the ground war beginning? I think it, it will be a long war. But the Kuwaiti ambassador to the UN spoke with great eloquence. Uh, here is some of what he had to say. Emotion of relief for the, uh, I mean, uh, my people in Kuwait. Uh, I mean, the country which has been under brutal occupation since the 2nd of August, that at least I mean, they will be uh, smelling, I mean, the fresh air of freedom, and they will get rid of this dictator and his army, which has inflicted in my country, un I mean, told misery, and uh, he disturbed the, sec the security in the region and uh, in the world at large. My, uh, I mean, agony is that while, uh, I mean, uh, we were striving since the 2nd of August to bring a peaceful solution for, for this conflict for only the sake of one intransigent leader. I mean, the world is paying dearly in order to preserve peace and security. We are sorry that we were not able to convince, the whole world was not able to convince Saddam Hussein to leave Kuwait and to save his nation, his country, and the region, the catastrophe which he has brought. 
The U.N. Security Council is still scheduled to meet tonight. Uh, they are supposed to be talking about merging the Soviet and the U.S. Uh, peace plans, but at this point, at this moment, the diplomatic uh, mergers seem moot. I'm Jeannie Mose reporting live from the U.N. That report from America's cable news network. Now for an update on the latest news, over to Anne Lucas. Dick Cheney, the U.S. Defense Secretary, said the war could only be stopped by Iraq's full compliance with the United Nations resolutions as demanded by the Allies. He said the final phase of the war has been the result of a huge logistical undertaking. Mr. Cheney announced that everything that is said about the land offensive would be useful information to the Iraqis, and military briefings were now to be cancelled. In answer to reporters' questions, he said the final decision to go forward was not taken until after the deadline had passed. Mr. Cheney would not say whether the battle would be restricted to Kuwait or whether troops would enter Iraq, but he said U.S. policy is not directed at changing the Iraqi government. Earlier, President Bush said the ground war had begun because Iraq had ignored the Allies' ultimatum. He said President Saddam had undertaken to destroy Kuwait and he had no option but to enter into the final phase of the war. He said he had full faith in the ability of the coalition forces and called for prayers for the troops at the front who he said were risking their lives. The Prime Minister John Major this morning said, Our thoughts will be with the Allied forces and with their families. We admire their courage, we, we wish them success and we pray God that they will return home safe. Meanwhile, at the United Nations, the Kuwaiti ambassador said his countrymen would soon be breathing the fresh air of freedom. The Iraqi ambassador there said he believed the war would be a long one. He said Iraq will never surrender and a lot of Americans will die. Baghdad Radio has not yet reported that the offensive has started. Military sources say a broad offensive is underway, with Allied troops engaging Iraqi forces along a 125-mile front. A 17,000-strong U.S. amphibious force is in position off Kuwait. Other reports, not confirmed officially, say large numbers of Iraqi troops have already begun surrendering. Iraq has retaliated by firing a Scud missile on targets in Saudi Arabia. Earlier, along the Saudi-Kuwaiti border, U.S. Marines destroyed 33 Iraqi armored vehicles and took an estimated 280 prisoners. A military spokesman said they had detected chemical gas, probably from a leaking dump that had been targeted by Allied bombers near the border. I'll have more news later. Now back to John.